Hello everyone in CSC 134, C++ programming. Welcome to module 7, which uh, focuses on searching and sorting arrays and vectors. So let's, uh, since we're continuing on with arrays, let's... Uh, Let's take a look at the uh, PowerPoint. I have modified the PowerPoint to include some of the algorithm uh, library uh, ways of doing things. The folks that wrote the textbook, um, I don't believe, are aware of the algorithm library material. And so I'm going to show you their technique, and then I'll show you a much easier way of doing the same thing. So hopefully uh, what I'm about to show you will, will uh, make things easier on you as, as you're implementing the programs. So uh, when we're uh, searching arrays, or vectors for that matter. There are two ways that we could go about this. And when I say search, I mean locate something inside the array. So again, there are two ways of doing that. There is a linear search and a binary search. So let's talk about linear first. Linear is okay when you've got a small amount of stuff that you're searching but if you had something that say had uh, 500,000 elements in it or even a hundred thousand or you know a really big array you or vector you would not want to use a linear search just saying okay so First off, here's a little, I, I put this in, um, animated GIF into the PowerPoint so that you could kind of see the two techniques here. The top one is showing how many steps it would take to find an element that we were searching for in an array that uh, had, had this many elements in it. Uh, and you can see that it found the binary found it in three steps. Down here is a sequential, also known as a linear. So the bottom one is the linear search. And you can see it has to go through every single element in the array one at a time. It's our, uh, it's, it, you know, where we got done in three steps with the binary search. Uh, the linear because it starts at the beginning and it works its way all the way through until it locates what it's looking for. Uh, it it goes through there one at a time. So uh, the linear is is easier to understand. I'm sure you can understand. It's just the same way that we would go through if we were looking for something in a book. And we started at the beginning and we just worked our way through each page until we found what we were looking for. So, um, searching uh, for the value 11 in this array right here, we would start at 17, then go to 23, then go to 5, and eventually we would find what we were looking for um, at 11. So if we search for something that's not there at all with the linear search, then we go all the way through the whole thing, okay? Every single element, we go through the whole thing from start to finish. So we would do the whole, you know, if this had 100,000 elements in it, you could see we'd be taking up a lot of time. So here's the kind of the pseudocode, the recipe for how you would do a linear search. And again, this is pure code 
not using anything that's in the algorithms library that I'm going to show you after we go through this the hard way. But let's talk about what's happening here if you're implementing this because you may have questions on your homework about this and on your exam about this. So you need to understand how it works even if you're not going to use it. So uh, first thing we do is we have a little variable that we call found that's going to be like our flag that you know signals when something has happened. Uh, and so we set it to false at the beginning. We set our position to minus one and we set our index to zero. So you can see we got three variables already that we're using. And then we implement a while loop here. And I'm going to indent it a little bit more so that the while is apparent to you. Okay, so here's, here's our while loop. And we go through this thing looping. And here we're bumping our index each time right here. See, we're adding one to our index. And so we just keep looping through, checking to see if the element right here, what we're, whatever one we're on to begin with, it would be zero. So uh, we check it to see if it's equal to what we're searching for. If it is, then we mark our flag as true. And we set the position equal to where we found it. And then we return where we found it. So that's the algorithm uh, takes a little bit more than this in code as you'll see here's a paste of the algorithm and you can see here that we've got our three variables that we just talked about that we set up here's our while loop it says while the index is less than the size of the array and it's not found the exclamation point says not, not found. Okay. And here we're looping through here over and over from start to finish. If we do find something right here, then we mark it as our flag is true. And we return, set our position to where we found it. And we return that. Okay. So that's the linear search very inefficient because it has to go through the whole thing okay here is definitely not in the book but the algorithm library uh, has a lot of stuff to make life easier and so if you include this at the top of your program this is actually less code here. It, it looks longer because I've put comments in it. Uh, anything in green I colored as a comment so that you could see uh, what's going on. But if you look at this real close, we don't have a loop in here at all. There is not a loop in this at all. It simply has uh, pointer now this is something new this is something new a pointer and I'll go ahead and highlight that just so you can see that it's a pointer okay you declare a pointer to something by you know this is an integer pointer okay so declaring an integer pointer that I'm calling position pointer that's going to have the a pointer to where we found something. Here's a number that we're going to use to return uh, our position, just like we did here. So th this is the main hard part about it right here, is that you have to have a pointer. And of course, up here, if you're going to use any of these algorithm functions, you have to have the actual array so if we have to have the actual array not a copy of it then you have to declare it like i'm showing you right there 
in red. I'm going to go ahead and change that to a, a red uh, color just so that's real, real apparent that that has to, that has to be uh, done that way in order for the algorithm library to work. Once you do that, all we're doing to do a linear uh, search with the algorithm library it was we're calling the built-in find function that's in the uh, algorithm library. What this does is if you passed our array in as a reference like this, then you have the beginning this begin function gets the beginning of the array. This begin function gets the end of the array. And you call this find function. And you notice there's no loop here at all. This does the looping for you. If it finds it, you know, if position is not equal to the end of the array, then it found it. And we need to get that position in an integer form not a pointer we want to get the actual integer number of the position and so we call this distance function that's built into the algorithms and this gets us a, uh, the, the actual position not the pointer but the actual position and it returns it so no loop at all no loop at all in this and you notice we had three variables in the previous example here we had this one this one and this one you notice we've only got two variables to keep track of here so uh, that's the algorithms uh, function to do a linear search now let's look at both of these linear search functions in some actual code. Uh, so right here, this first one, this we've got a pretty big array, as you can see. Pretty good size. Okay. So this is doing a linear search. And you can see down here is all that code that the textbook thinks that you have to do. It's got the while loop in it. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to ask us uh, to, uh, let's see if it prompts us for anything here. Okay. No, it's not prompting for anything. It's just searching for 85 in this and wherever it finds 85 the first case that it finds it it'll return us that spot so where should it find it if there's 90 things in here it looks like it should find it at, at position 89 let's build this and run it and you see it found it uh, at position 89 Okay, so this is using the function here to do a linear search. You notice that they're getting a copy of the array right here. Okay, getting a constant copy of the array. All right, so that's the textbook way of doing it. Now let's take a look at my way uh, using the algorithm library. So here's using the linear search in the algorithms library. And you'll notice that here I have my function prototype. Remember the stuff that I put in red there. This is so that the actual iterable array goes into this linear search function. Okay. Now all this code here. As far as we could see there's no difference. There's no difference right here in the fu main function. Where you will see the difference is down here in this code right here. So uh, one difference though up here, you notice what I had to include. I had to include algorithm. All right, so back down here, 
only two variables instead of three. Remember, this is the pointer to the position. So here we're calling the find function that's built into algorithms. That does the linear search for us. Okay. It has to get the beginning and the end of the array and what you're searching for. This is going to return a pointer to the spot in memory where it found that thing. And then here is where we convert that pointer. We actually have the uh, this distance function goes out there and looks at the array and finds the actual spot where that pointer is. So I'll build this and run it and you can see that it does exactly the same thing but no while loop no three variables all you gotta do is remember that we're calling the find function here and we're calling the distance function there to find out to convert that pointer back to the actual position so that's doing a linear search now the next type of search is called a binary search. And a binary search, and you need to know this for your homework and for your quiz, but a binary search is much faster, okay, is much faster, but it requires that our array be in order. You notice how the lowest element is first, the highest one is last. So if you're going to do a binary search, you have to put that array in order before you can search it. It won't work unless the array is sorted. Now, next week we talk about some sorting algorithms some ways to take something like this that's not sorted and put it in order okay so here's how the way the bin or here's the way the binary search works it looks at the beginning and the end and it checks to see if what we're searching for is in here is it is it less than or equal to 29 and greater than or equal to 2? If it's not, then it stops right then. If what we're searching for is between these two numbers, then it divides the stuff in half and looks at the left half or the right half and then... Uh, if it's not here, it looks at the left half. And it keeps splitting things in two until it locates what it's looking for. That's why it's so much more efficient. It keeps cutting this information in half and it just zeroes in on it from both sides. So I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a couple of animations that... Uh, we can look at to see uh, how they work. So how this works that I was trying to, to describe to you. So here's a linear search in the best case scenario. Look at how fast it stopped. It was able to go straight to the middle because remember I told you it keeps cutting things in half. So it was able to go straight to the middle and find it in one step. Okay. You can see the sequential search required 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. That's the best case if what we're looking for is right in the middle because it looks at the midpoint and uh, it would find it right away. Here's the worst case scenario. Okay. Worst case is that what we're looking for is uh, 
all the way at the end. How many steps is it taking? Three, four. Okay. It took four steps if it was all the way at the end. Okay. Sequential, on the other hand, is going to have to go through and it's going to find it the first time because it's the first element in the array. So um, most of the time, probably 99% of the time, the binary search is going to be much faster as long as it's not going to take too much work to put that array in order if it's not already there. But as you might imagine, our binary search takes a lot more code. Look at what we've got now. We've got two more. We've got an additional variable. Remember when we were doing a linear search using the textbook way? We had three variables. Now they've got four variables: first, last, found, and position. Now here's our code that has our loop in it that starts looking at the middle okay and if what we're looking for is in the right half you know we actually have if else if and else because first off if we find it right in the middle then we're done you saw that when we were looking at the animation otherwise if what we're looking for is in the right half, then we go start splitting. Uh, otherwise, we go to the left half and start splitting there and narrowing things down. So here's all that code to implement that uh, with our uh, textbook way of doing it. You can see that's a lot of code. Now, I'm going to show you my way using the algorithms library. And again, this is a lot less code. A lot less code. How many variables did I need? I still only needed two variables. I needed these two right here, same as before. Remember that you have to include algorithms. You have to pass your array by reference like I have in red here. So we've got our two variables, a pointer and the position. Here's where we're doing a binary search. The function in algorithms is called a lower bound. This looks pretty much like the find function that we were using earlier, doesn't it? You get the beginning of the array, you get the end of the array, and you have the variable. And so this is our binary search right here, lower bound. Okay. Once we have found where something is, we get our, uh, our uh, pointer converted back to a regular variable. And then we return the distance from our uh, from our uh, pointer, uh, we return the distance where it was located. And that's it. That's all that it takes to make a binary search with the algorithms library. Would you rather do these, this little bit of code here? Or would you rather do all this? Okay. So I'm going to do another video to talk about the uh, assignment this week. Okay, The assignment is project, not, uh, project 10. And I will do a separate video to demonstrate how to do what we were just doing with the algorithm library. Uh, here in module 7 this menu processing demonstration right here is what I will talk about 
If you've taken Python, we did exactly the same thing in Python. If not, no big deal. I'm just trying to let the folks know that they're not having a Groundhog um, Day moment where, have I seen this before? Yes, you saw it before if you took Python. But uh, we will use three synchronized arrays to handle this menu processing program in C++. But that'll be a separate video. I hope you folks have a good week. Stay safe, stay healthy. Good luck.